Here, somebody say, beware, beware of the dead, of the dead excuses. excuses. Can we talk about this real quick today? Everyone say it one more time. Say, beware, beware of the dead, of the dead excuses. 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 Listen, now, go ahead and quick see as we go ahead into this one. Um, listen, a couple things I want to make note of before I start preaching today. Number one, I promise you, I don't like to lie in the pulpit. I have made a habit doing it in the past, but I promise you, this is going to be, this won't be as long as you think it's going to be. Um, I was praying to God and asking God, God say, make it simple, make it quick, because I have a mission for someone today. The second thing I'll make note of today, not very often do I go into the podium and I'm about to preach a message that God say to me, move to the side, I got this one, just trust me. Every now and then he does it. I can do everything I want to to study, and God says, you can do all that, but I have something I want to say, and I'm going to make one more thread note. God has said, I'm coming to speak to a certain someone today, and I believe like there's more than one, about three or four people that God has set aside this sermon in this series that I was enjoying to interrupt my series and say, I have a message for someone. I enjoy Beware of the Dead uh, worship. It was really fun for me to teach that. I enjoyed Beware of the Dead faith. It was a lot of fun last week. Yes. I'm going to enjoy this one, but I didn't look for this one. This one here popped up in the middle of everything and I was going to preach it, but I didn't know exactly what God was going to do. So can I do what God said to do today? Yes, sir. And can you do me a favor? If this message is not for you, can you just be a man in me just so you can get somebody else's a blessing? Amen? Yes, sir. So someone say, beware. beware. Somebody say, beware. beware. This is, I am promise you, I've never preached a message that, I've preached message before that I knew for a fact that God said this is for someone, but not so blatant, so, so calm and so cool that God know what he's doing. Somebody say, amen. amen. Somebody say, beware, beware. of the dead, the dead. excuses. Now, now, write the word beware. We all know this so far. You've been with me for a little while in this series. The word beware means be cautious and alert. Be cautious and alert. Be cautious and alert. Anytime you hear the word beware, open up your, your, your senses, your five senses. Open up your senses and use all of them because you're going to go into something that you need to pay attention to everything you're about to go through so you won't come, or so you can't come out the other side. Somebody say beware. beware. The world of the word is dead. Many of y'all, when I said the series, you thought I was going to be dealing with dead people or a spiritual, some type of deadness. But this is not dead in the, 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 the connotation that you think you're going to be dealing with. This word dead means not working because of fault or not working due to a fault. Not working due to a fault. You know what I like about this type of deadness? With a little fixing, life can return. Somebody with a little fixing... I'm a, I'm a technician by nature. I, I, I do things called tweaking. A little tweaker. I have a little tweaker. It's a little, little piece of tool like this that has a little small metal piece on the end. Not big enough for a screwdriver, um, but not small enough for, for other things. But you make a small tweak, a small adjustment, and look at one little small tweak, one small adjustment, and make the calibration go right back to where it should be. Do anybody feel like in their life every now and then I need a little tweaking? Just a little tweaking, a little tweaking. And if I got a little tweaking, if, if I prayed, I just listen, I, I know for a fact I prayed last week and my prayer was hidden. It's like something just a little off this week. Somebody say, something may be dead because of a fault. Listen, listen, that word excuses, excuses, excuses. Has anybody ever gave an excuse? Money hand was my coach. Anybody was coached by money hand? Money had an old saying, and I, I love this old saying. I use it now, and people look at me crazy every time I say it. Anybody know what that saying was about excuses that money had used? He says, excuses is like a butthole. Everybody got one, but nobody want to hear the other ones. So see the other ones, or whatever you put it. Oh, no, no, that's not what he said. He said, everyone got an excuse like a butthole. Everyone got one, and everyone stinks. That's what he said. Everyone stinks. Somebody say, all excuses. Y'all not going to talk to me anymore. Somebody say, all excuses stink. I can't stand when I hear an excuse. It, it's, it's, a, it's a pause not to do what you know you're supposed to be doing. Somebody said, get over the excuses. I didn't come to preach nobody today. I promise you, God sent me to sit down in the place today and remind me where I come from because I had a lot of excuses in my life. God said, I want you to use your experience, your reminiscing ability to remind people that excuses get in my way. Somebody said, excuses. So by definition, word excuse, by definition, it is a reason, write this down, a reason or explanation used to be released from duty or requirement. If you got your phones and you're on the app, the definition is already there for you. It's already there for you. See, now look at God. See, we can take knowledge and do work. Somebody say a reason or explanation used to be released 
from duty or requirement. Duty or requirement. So by definition, Brother Darius, give me this, the, the, the summation of this whole definition. Everyone reading from me. Ready? Read. Beware of the gay excuses. Be cautious and alert when your reason or explanation to be released from a duty or requirement doesn't work anymore due to a fault. Now, now how many of y'all been saved for a little while? Come on, talk to me. Been saved for a little while. And when you first got saved, I mean, God was showing up, he was doing something in your life, showing up, doing something in your life, and it's like, you didn't have to think about it happening. And listen, and you could even, you could even, when you first got saved, you know for a fact, how many know God had a call in your life? And you, you could even put it off uh, for a little while. I, I'm not going to go there. We, we're going to take our time. I'm not going to rush myself. Y'all ain't going to make me do that. Somebody say, beware, beware. of the dead excuses beware. is telling us to be cautious, be cautious. And, alert and alert when your reasons your reason. or explanations reason. explanation. to be released from duty or requirements doesn't work anymore. Listen, real quick. Uh, um, this usually happens from one fault and one fault only. Everyone write this down. Grace has run out. Grace has run out. Use it for one reason and one reason only. Everyone say, grace has run out. Now, now, now listen, let's look at the word grace real quick by definition. I'm moving on, moving on, moving on. Look at the word grace by definition. The word grace means an, an, an extended an extended period of time granted as a special favor. Grace. Grace. An extended period of time that's been granted for a special favor. How many of y'all use your grace period for y'all cardinal? How many of y'all use your grace period for your house note? It ain't due on the first. Oh, it's not. It's due on the fifteenth. It's not due. My, my, listen, my, my, my owner, my owner of my home. Somebody say grace. Grace. An extended period. Extended period. Given. Given. By favor. See, I think my, I think my owner was dealing with me at first. I think his wife got involved <laughs> because we was cool. I promise we was cool, and um, my house note was due on the first. How many of y'all get that one free check a year? Yes. Come on, I'm talking to get that one free check a year. Yes. You get paid every two weeks, and you get that one free check, and then you use it, and it throw your whole cycle off. Yeah. And your bills, you should be paying on the first, and now you got to pay like on the ninth or the tenth because you won't be off. Because I, I see yeah. the, the, the struggle for real, okay? Right. And, and so I was, I, I got that one, that one shift, and so my pay was due. I thought on the field. I promise I thought it was on the field. Well, I just find out it's probably due on the third, no later than the third. On the first, no later than the third. I'll pay like on the eighth. And he took it. Somebody say favor. Right. And so he took it. So I went on for two years. On the eighth, the ninth, sometime the tenth. He took it. So I renewed my lease with him. I said, uh, hey man, uh, I, I got a, I got some, some going on. And so uh, we want to go ahead and renew the lease. He says, we can do that. But one thing, you got to start paying your payment before the third. I'm like, what you mean? I thought it was a filter. No, no. And I know it's his wife because his wife ain't never met me. Every time he come out and visit me, he said she come, she never show up. <laughs> so I think she got a problem with me, but we're going to just deal with it. So now I pay my bill on what? First. And I'm the first third. <laughs> <laughs> because of special favor. <laughs> Who do that? Who pay the bill on time? Using all my time, I mean, I might need that money for something, you know? I pay my tithes sometimes. As soon as I get my tithes, I pay my tithes. Everything else gotta wait just a minute. My wife get mad at me. Why don't you just go pay everything? She pay, listen, my wife is not allowed to do the bills. She don't count the money. She just pay everything. And they get mad when they ain't nothing over. Baby, don't you know we can't pay everything? It's just, it don't work that way. Only in my house. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed now. So I said, Grace, Grace. an extended, an extended period of time. Ground, granted, granted, as a special favor. As a special favor. Now listen, listen, somebody say, you, you, you had excuses, but now, no more, your excuses not working anymore. You had excuses, excuses not working anymore, because somebody say, grace ran out. Grace ran out. Can I teach this for a split second? Because I got to bring it down to where the kids can even understand. Can I, can I teach to the teenagers today, Minister Shannon, don't have youth church, can I, can I preach to the teenagers today? And, and, and can I preach to the whole house at the same time? So, so. A good example of this, listen to this, a good example, and I'm going to read my notes. Not often do I do that, but, but I got to read my notes today. A good example of this is, is, is it happens between parents and kids. Someone say, Grace runs out. Grace runs out. 
And they had an excuse, but grace runs out. Listen to this. Half between parents and kids. A parent will call their child. Now, now you gotta make sure you insist to everyone I'm saying. A parent will call their child to take out the trash. Kill them? Now, in my house, I get my girls to take out trash and I feel guilty every time. But they can't depend on no man. So I do get my girls to take out trash. I feel bad. They don't cut the yard, but they do take out the trash. Amen. So don't judge me, all right? What you doing, little girls? Listen, my house is my house. Mind your business. All right. A parent called a child. Take out the trash. Wash the dishes. Clean your room. In some cases, mow the lawn. The parent will call the child. And the child, listen. The parent will call the child. And listen, listen to this. It says, due to it being an inconvenience to the child, the child will ask to be excused from the responsibility of doing what has been asked of them because by offering an excuse. They will be asked to be excused. Mama, can I be excused? This happens in my house every Tuesday and sometimes Thursdays and Fridays and, and Mondays. Jesus, it happens a lot, don't it? <laughs> And, and we walk in the house. Now, what the problem is, I don't understand it because they're going to bed at 10 o'clock any other day of the week. But just because they had a basketball game, a track meet, or could anybody talk to me tonight, they'll come in the house and say, Mama, I'm so tired. Can I watch this in the morning? And us being the parents that we are, will accept this excuse and grant them a little bit of extra time by favor, I don't agree with it. You watched this at 10 o'clock last week when you was on the phone all night. Why can't you watch this right now? But mama got a little more grace than daddy got. But don't be twisted because sometimes my grace outlives her grace too. But we have grace. Someone say grace. grace. Am I talking to myself today? No. Listen to me. I gotta read it. I gotta read it. I don't wanna get out, my, get out my notes because God was good last night when he gave it to me. A parent would call their child to ask them to do some work due to it being an inconvenience. Someone say inconvenience. inconvenience. Can I tell you, it's never convenient to do something you don't want to do. It's never convenient. If you can buy, listen, it's fine, not convenient for you to pay bills. It's never convenient for you to pay bills. I wish I could be debt free and no bills. But I got too many things I want and I like watching TV every now and then. And so I got to pay somebody to do that. Somebody say, it's never convenient to do. I'm going to talk to me. I'm, I'm going to get you back to your front room. I promise you. But can you walk with me for a minute? I got to take my time getting there. Can I talk to you for a minute? Everybody help me out with something. It's never convenient to do what you don't want to do. So listen, 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 listen. One time. Due to it being an inconvenience, the child will ask to be excused from the responsibility. Can I help you out with one more time? Somebody say responsibility. You were supposed to do it. This is nobody. How many of y'all got weeks for washing dishes at your house? Is your week to wash dishes in the house? My wife, I don't, I can't keep up with it. I promise you, I can't. My wife got a system in place. The week that you wash dishes is the, the week that you that you 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 ride in the front of the car. So you run in the front seat. You ride in the front seat. If you wash dishes, you ride in the front seat. And, and, and if you don't wash dishes, you can't ride in the front seat. See, it's petty, I know it is. You can't ride, ride in the front seat, but you gotta you, you gotta clean the bathroom up. And you gotta sweep the floors. And, and Maddie don't have to do nothing, none of that, and they get mad because Maddie not doing it, but they don't realize that when they both graduate, Maddie got six more years being out by herself. So so Maddie not gonna help y'all right now because y'all gonna bail on in a minute and she gotta do it all by herself. So I'm trying to look out for Maddie. So so mom's making all the rules, I'm making them step. <laughs> A snapshot in the hard house. It's crazy, but we, it works. So I never know who wants my dishes, but whoever whoever sweeps the floor, clean the bathroom, and take out the trash, and can't ride in the front seat. And I never know. I only ask, who is going to take out the trash today? My wife stops and she starts thinking, and she say, Lana. And Lana say, Why, Mama? I did it. No, you're lying. There's trash still sitting here. So I say, it was your responsibility. Nobody else. Nobody else. Your responsibility. Can I stick with the kids for a minute? Yes, sir. Yeah, the kids like, Bishop, what are you doing? I promise you somewhere I'm going all the way around. <laughs> Due to an inconvenience, the child will ask for, to be excused for the responsibility, for the responsibility of doing what has been asked 
up them by offering an excuse. I'm tired. I got a lot of homework. It was a long day, mama. Can I be excused from doing what I'm supposed to do? Even though it gotta be done. Can I get some extra time? So I say amen. amen. Depending on the legitimacy of the excuse, the parent may accept only to require it to be completed at a later date and time. So we never say, yeah, baby, no problem. We say, yeah, baby, no problem, but you better do it in the morning before you go to school. So that means, listen, you didn't do it last night and you're tired, but now you gotta get up an hour early to do what you could've done last night and you still miss sleep. Yes. So it would've been better just to do. Last night. And now you, 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 it's not like you're more rested. Now you're pouting and you're mad about it. You're angry the next day because you got less sleep, but it was so behind who told to do it later than when you was told to. Right. So say, beware. I'm gonna walk it out. I promise you, I'm walking out. I'm not gonna watch God wrote it down, so I'm gonna go ahead and do what God saw it. So I say, depending, depending. on the, the, legitimacy the legitimacy of the excuse, of the, excuse. the parent may yeah. accept yeah. Only, only to require, to require it, to it to be completed at a later date. So it still, still gotta be done. How many of y'all wait till the last minute to do everything? I say I work better in the fourth quarter. Sister Lee hates me for it. Sister Lee, I come to Sister Lee all the time, at the last minute all the time, because I work better in the fourth quarter. She said, Bishop, I like to win in the first quarter. If you win in the first quarter, you can relax in the fourth quarter. I say, I play my best in the fourth quarter. But really, truly, I'm lying. I just want to buy some time. And Sister Lee can't stand it, y'all. She's making me a third quarter type of guy. Third quarter. I ain't going to be first quarter for a while. She's making me a third quarter type of guy. I'm, I'm picking my pace up a little bit. Listen, 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 listen. Third, 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 third point, third point. Somebody say, no, no, no. So when the later date and time comes and the child violates it with another excuse, the parent's grace runs out. Yes. Now the parent, can I stop for a second? They violate, mama, I overslept. And I still gotta go to practice. At, at our school, they stupid. <laughs> They make the kids go to practice at 6 o'clock in the morning. Where they do that at? So if you miss that small window of one hour, that means you got to get ready to go to school and wash dishes, and you ain't got much time to play with. So now we got to pick which one you're going to go to, the dishes or y'all not ready. Y'all not ready. Y'all, I'm going somewhere. Y'all going to. You chose to go to bed early when you could, but now you're making me pick and choose when it's yours. So I got one suggestion, mama, how about you better go and you wash the dishes? How about just go and you clean the room up? How about you do, oh, mama ain't gonna do that. Because I had three capable children, I washed as long as I could, now it's your own. What happens when the parent has done all they can do, and now it's time for you to be a grown person, but do what the parents still do, what you should have been doing. Can I help you out real quick? As long as you let the excuses work, they're going to keep on giving them. Yeah. Someone say, Grace, Grace runs out. Runs out. I'm, I'm, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. When that later date and time comes and that child violates it with another excuse, the parent, Grace, runs out. Now the parent, not caring what the child has going on, as a reason, for not being able to complete what has been requested. Mama, I gotta go to practice. Mama, I gotta go to practice. So, so talk about that last night. But mama, mama, my mama, mama, mama. So, if you wanna change your child and grow them up, give them some souls. Give them some souls. I don't care. So, I don't care. So, that's your problem. You pay the debt that you've created. If you don't give them a soul, you're going to have to sew into them at times that you shouldn't have to. You're going to have to pay. You're going to have to wash the dishes. And now I think when they get grown, when things don't happen, mama always going to show up when you should have gave them a soul. Where he going? Where is he going? I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. So child going on. Hold up. So when later daytime comes and the child violates it with another excuse, the parent, Grace, runs out. Now the parent, not caring what the child has going on, as a reason for not being able to. Someone says, it's legitimate. It's legitimate. It's legitimate. If you don't go to practice, you can't play. Yeah. 
And I feel bad, my child, not being able to play. But the school don't want me. The school don't want me. Can I get an amen? The school don't want me. The school don't want you. You had a choice. And you made that choice, yes. You had a choice. See, teach them now that their choices cost them so they won't cost you in the future. This is what you preaching about the adults of the kids. I'm going to get the kids to help the adults. Somebody say amen. Amen. Fourth one, fourth one, fourth one. Almost there. Now the child who put off what could have been completed in the past is now being inconvenienced from doing something that is totally legitimate. It's totally legitimate. You could, you should be at school right now. You should be, but you're gonna be late. We done taught it. My mom already got phone. If I get one more, I'm gonna get after attention. So you legitimately should have your behind in the school. Going to class when I am inconvenienced because you you inconvenience me, so we both can be inconvenienced right now. You're not going nowhere until you wash them dishes. I got any parents in the house. No, 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 no. I got any old school parents in the house. Cause new school parents watch this for kids. I almost forgot how to wash dishes. I don't watch this in my house. I, listen, I was old school. See, I'm still nice. I'm still nice. Cause my daddy, when I was raised up, I got really angry with him. Because he could've woke me up at 10. He could've woke me up at 11. No, he wakes me up at three. Oh wow! Not to wash the ones that I did clean, take earn this. Out the cupboard and take an air dish and wash them. And air dish better be dry, air dish better be clean. If not, you're gonna do it again tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh my god. And still gotta get up and wash the well, and feed the animals and feed them and do all the things before I walk a half a mile to the bus stop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I miss the bus. Your behind gonna walk down 222 all the way down to 150 until you bust a right and get to the schoolhouse. Oh, wow. Am I lying, Daddy? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mama, I don't remember that. That's before you came along, Mama. He was ignorant before you came along, I promise. <laughs> and sit there and watch me with a paddle in his hand. And you better not cry. See, y'all don't know. <laughs> And my kids want to get mad. And when I tell them that they got to watch this, they're going to make the dish make a sound when they hit the camera. <laughs> Did I just hit that plastic ball? Hit my credit card? And my iPad nuts! And my healthy kids look at me like, bitch, shut up. <laughs> Casey not even smiling. She not, she not even, she not even busting a smile. This is their pretty girl. I'm not alone. Yeah. Can I keep going? Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right, all right. So when that later time comes, and listen, don't no, no, I'm fourth point, fourth point. Not a child who put off what could have been completed in the past is not being inconvenienced from doing something that is totally legitimate due to the fact that the excuse is no longer working because they grace with their parent has run out. Sorry, sweetheart. You excused out. Excuses don't work no more. I don't care what's gonna cost you. Can't go to the game, so. Can't go on a date, so. Can't talk on the phone, so. You made that day. Now you got an eye. I know it hurt. I know it's inconvenient, but baby, it's gonna hurt me more if I let you get away with this. I need you to get this now so that I can get benefit from what you get now and I ain't gotta suffer with you later. Can anybody say amen? Can I go one more step a little further? I'm almost out of here. One more step a little further. This is not only occur with earthly parents and their children, this also occurs with our heavenly father and his children. Okay, I'm making a shift. I'm making a shift, can I make a shift? I'm gonna say it one time. This not only occurs with earthly parents and their children, 
It also occurs with the heavenly father and his children. We find a good example of this in the 8th chapter of Matthew 18 verse through the 22nd verse. Can we go real quick? Real quick, real quick, real quick. And the first thing we find here, you got it, Brother Devin, Brother Darius? First thing we find here in this verse, we find an open-ended declaration. Write that down. If in your phones, the answer to your first blank spot is open-ended. Open-ended. Now go to my second verse. No, 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 stay there, stay there, stay there. Go back, go back, go back. Let me walk through it. Someone said open-ended open declaration. What open-ended means not having fixed limits. Not having fixed limits. Unrestricted abroad. Not having fixed limits. Unrestricted abroad. Declaration. The act of declaring, announcing, or making heard clearly. I'm going to make this clear. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make an open-ended declaration. I'm going to say something openly, and I want everybody to hear what i got to say. Pastor, tell you, I only... Can imagine this brother then just came out of some bad excuses and tired of the paper he had to pay. So I make an open end declaration because I'm tired of going through hell. Have anybody made some, some declarations because you're tired of hell and you're just going through and you were saying mercy, but really what you're saying is God, whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do it. Anybody have been there? Yes. Somebody say, because yes. your excuses yes. became dead yes. and God yes. got tired yes. of your excuses yes. and the heat turned up. And you came to a point to say, I don't care whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do it. Yeah. We find an open excuse here. Real open, open, not open excuse, an open ended declaration. Real quick. So when ready, when Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross the other side of the lake. Keep going. Then the teacher of the law came to him and said, So I said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. So I said, open ended. Open ended. Listen. Y'all don't know teachers, these people were, or if you said Bible study, talked about Sadducees and Pharisees and, and all these people who were, didn't like Jesus. They didn't. But he comes to a point in his life where he must have been through a lot of hell. Can I speak isogenical? I don't know. But I have been to a point where I came through a whole lot of hell. So I'm going to use this moment to talk about me in the middle of his problems. Right. And he in a place where he shows up in the middle of the crowd where folks could judge him. Because Nicodemus was one of these folks, a teacher. Remember Nicodemus? When did Nicodemus come? In the nighttime. Uh -huh. When nowhere, no one was around. And he shows up and says, Jesus, what must I do to be saved? Uh, uh, what does it mean for me to be born again? He didn't want nobody to know that he was seeking. This brother here is over that moment. He probably had that moment and he came back and said, you know what? I don't care who hear me. Right. Jesus, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. I'll put my Sadducees, Pharisees, coat down and follow you. Somebody say the first thing we see here. It's an open-ended open declaration. declaration. I'm going to add this to it for a brother who's fed up or going through. I'm fed up. Anybody ever been there? Yes. I'm fed up. Then, Pastor Tony, we see my next point, not just open-ended declaration, but a realistic response. Someone say realistic. realistic. Let's keep going. Well, let's write down the word realistic. What realistic means dealing with or according to reality. Response means I am short reply. Let's look at this realistic response. This is what Jesus says. Somebody read it for me. Ready? Read. Jesus replied. Don't talk real loud. Ready, read. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Is I like your enthusiasm, young man? I like your enthusiasm. I'm going to use you, Elder Trevor. I love your enthusiasm. And, and, and Evangelist Dickinson is, is he listening because she just had her first call to wash dishes. She had her first call to clean the house. She had her first call to make sure she cut the yard. Her first call. I'm pretty sure this is this young man's multiple calls. He had a point where I'm through going through. And I'm, whatever you say, God, I'm going to do it. I'm making an open declaration. And Jesus is talking to him, but she heard. Gotcha. And he says, this open ended declaration, saying, well, I'm glad you say you go through anything. She just heard, but she thought she was answering, but she didn't realize what she was about to go through when she answered. And she overheard a conversation Jesus was having with somebody else about the cause of what they've been through and had a second thought about what she wanted to do. Listen to this. He says, to her, he says I'm glad you accept it. I'm pretty sure you've been through a whole lot of hell. Yeah, it was on point because I was tired of you going through it. I needed to use you. But now that you accepted it, I want to tell you that. Well, go back, go back, go back. What's the next? Go back, go back. 21st, 21st. What do you say? Jesus replied, foxes have dens, birds have nests. But I'm going to tell you, roll on me, ain't going to be comfortable. Because the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And constantly, like, hold up. Can I be excused? I ain't know all that was gonna go on. Yeah. 
I thought we were standing in the, in, 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 in the window. I thought we were standing. No, dude, I heard you, your daddy rich. I thought we had someone to say, what are you talking about? Hold up, just like, I ain't talking to you. He said, no, 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 he's just talking. Birds have nests, foxes have holes. And this brother like, I don't care. Whatever I gotta do is better than the hell I just came out of. I don't care. Whatever I gotta do is better than the hell I just came out of. So if birds have holes, I'll stay, stay in a fox and hole, I'll stay in a bird's nest. Whatever it is, Jesus, I'm gonna roll. Cause what I'm going through is not worth the things I'm going through. I wanna follow you. There's a long side, another brother came. Read the next one, Pastor. Next one. So the next thing you see is a legitimate excuse. Legitimate. Legitimate excuse. Another side for another one. Get over here. Hey, whoa! But hold up! I ain't know what was going on. No. And I'm gonna imagine he been caught a couple of times. He been he been put on a couple of times, and he just decided to sign up. I'm just listen. I'm tired of going through. I'm tired of having this. I'm gonna sign up today, but I didn't realize the hell I've been going through. So listen, this is what he says. Another disciple says, "Ready to read? Ready to read?" Another disciple said to him, "Lord, first let me go bury my father." I got a daddy that was dying already. He was already dying, but you just remember. You showed up for recruitment. But honestly, you heard about the foxes and the birds and all that. Now you all feel like you got a dead, dying daddy. You got a job to die. You want to show up all the time. You got, you got all this business that you got to do, but you didn't have that same business last month. Can I tell you that? Your excuse is about to run out. Yeah. Uh, uh, another disciple said to him, Lord, first, let me, somebody say legitimate. Yeah. I got to go to work. I got to get this job. This, I'm, 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 I'm gonna preach. I'm gonna I'm gonna serve. But I just got a promotion of a job that's gonna make me not work on Sundays. And so I first gotta go make this money. Yeah. I first got I'm not gonna do nothing until I can take care. Pastor Hines was in a, a pastor meeting we had yesterday and, and Pastor Hines told Pastor Davis, he said, Man, I don't forget. I have a mind made up. I knew God called me the pastor. But I told God, I'm a first now you talk to a man, I'm, I'm gonna say his business. He had million dollar contracts. Yeah. He left here to go sell sand that was making him millions of dollars. This brother would touch over five, six hundred thousand dollars a year with no even when I even trying. Somebody say when when his first excuse came. When his first excuse came. And God okayed the first excuse. And the second. When I told you and it wasn't needed yet, oh, I allowed the pause. But you better keep on going as long as you can because it's going to come a day when yeah. posing ain't going to be an option. So take it long with your kid. But it's yeah. Yeah. So he said, Pastor, Bishop, boy, no, I'm, I'm going to get my church open. But I got which I got $40,000 in the account. Yeah. He told me his words because I don't want to be a big and preacher. I don't want nothing for nobody. But you don't realize what he just said. I don't want to also need nothing from God. Oh, man. God shut off everything. They moved a barge from across the water all the way to Galveston for him, for his million dollar business. And it got to Galveston, they ain't moved since. God shut down everything. Why? Foxes have holes and birds have nets. But the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his hand. I'm going to make sure I got someone to lay my head. God said, I'm going to take the pillow away from you. Ah, Jesus. I'm going to move all comfort until you realize excuses are dead. Beware when your excuses don't work no more. Who I come to preach today? Those folks who making excuses, but God ain't listening. Okay. Another disciple says, Lord, let me first go bear my desk. Somebody this next time we saw was a legitimate excuse. Can we go home? The last thing we saw was a rejecting response. He took it last time. All right. Go home. Bury your mama. All right, go on to work. All right, go on by the house. And I'm going to bless you with the house. Go on, go on. Go on, go on deal with the husband. Go on, go on help the children. Go on, go, 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 go. Go. <laughs> go ahead. We don't expect to see you next Sunday. Go ahead. Now you're going to go. Now you're going to get up and over. But don't, don't worry about it. You got a legitimate excuse. excuse. All the things I gave you, you got to take care of. Jeez, man. 
legitimate. I'll bless you with it, but you got, go ahead. Go ahead, go, 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 go. I got you, I got your number. And you get the car and the car start breaking down. Go, go. You get the house and the house note just can't get paid. Go. Get the job and the boss is getting your nerves every day. God say, go. I'll be right here waiting. When the rejected response comes. Someone say rejected. Rejected. Response. Listen, 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 listen to the rejected response. Rejected. Go ahead. What, what did you say? Go ahead and play something, David. They're going to think I'm lying to him. I'm going to go home. Go ahead and play something, David. What, what did they say? But Jesus told him. Hold on, say it real loud. Jesus, I got to go marry my daddy. Jesus says, Follow me. Jesus, I got to pay this house. Jesus says, Follow me. Jesus, I got to kill my kids. They're not acting right. I got one who acted fool. I don't like the fool. But Jesus says, Follow me. And let them yeah. bury what? Yeah, they already did. They already dead. Your cousin's dead. Your auntie dead. All of them dead. I told you to life so you can bring your whole family to life. Why are you burying dead stuff that you can't bring to life? I'm tired of excuses. Boy, I've been calling you for a long time. And I'm tired of calling you. Girl, I've been calling you for a long time. I'm tired of calling you. No, no, no. No, you can't go. You can leave. But won't nothing go right for you until you show back up. I thought God was a forgiving God. Yeah, but he ain't a patient God. What you mean? He gonna punish me? No. Do without my covering. Your covering was not promised. Just do it. Boy, I got folks who need to be saved because of you. What you mean you're not gonna open up new destiny? I got people who need to be saved because of you. What you mean you're not going to start an MDCM because you're trying to make a bishop with a happy? Boy, I got a call for your life. Okay, okay, okay. You want to? Follow me or else. God does not play when he got a call in your life. He is calling you and he expects you to respond. And if you don't, he's going to say, go ahead. Go. If y'all knew the amount of times that God took his cover off me and I thought I was being a man, I thought I was being a husband, I thought I was being a, the person I supposed to God say, without me, nothing is possible. So, he says, but Jesus told him, follow me. Let the dead better dead. Like I know, you'll be like this brother over here and say, God, whatever, whatever you're doing this season, don't do it without me. Whatever you need God. I done been there too long to where excuses don't get it no more. So I come here to do one thing and one thing only. To tell you, beware if your excuses are not working. It's maybe because God has moved the cover and not accepted them no more. My daughter, no. When I say no, it's not going to be answered. You can't, no, you can't put off this. Like, no, no, no. Watch. Because the more I give you power, the more you're going to take the ready. So no, no more. Watch them just when you get home. Take them, because now what I just did, I just granted you rest. Now you can sleep in a little longer. You spent 20 minutes to do something that's now going to give you an extra hour of sleep. Now if you do something right now, listen, can I tell you something? Whenever you don't do it now, you're going to lose something in the future. Yeah. I'm trying to stop you from going through unnecessary hell and be able to accept all your blessings. I put nothing on pause, so no, you can't wait no more. No. No. Y'all know who I came to preach today? But I come to tell you one thing. If your excuses are not working anymore, and you don't know why the heat will not stop, God says, I'm sorry, I took your umbrella. And the sun is going to beam on your head. I will not cover you until you move to where I am. Father, I come right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Ask right now, God, to touch the house.